Well, Flash Boys like trading manipulation is apparently rampant on certain cryptocurrency exchanges. This is according to a paper released last week from Cornell Tech. The report suggests arbitrage bots are front running the crypto trades of decentralized exchanges and profiting ahead of ordinary users. Talking to us now about the pitfalls of crypto and the potential for it is Don Tapscott, the founder and executive chair of the Blockchain Research Institute. Don specializes in technology driven disruption and cryptocurrencies. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. So this is one of the problems with uh, with the cryptocurrency world, right? Is that there's so much we don't know about who's doing what. How serious is this for its legitimacy when we now know well, bots are front running? <laughs> well, I think the irony of this story is the reason we know that is because of the characteristic of decentralized exchanges that enable transparency. And that's why decentralized exchanges will dominate over the centralized ones because you can identify this kind of bad behavior and do something about it. And in fact, uh, all assets, not just currencies, but traditional securities uh, will be traded on these uh, decentralized exchanges. Because if you think about traditional exchanges today for assets, they're full of all kinds of bad behavior. Flash boy, front running, the whole thing. So this is not the problem with cryptocurrency exchanges. It's, it's why they're part of the solution. Interesting. China, for example, has banned ICOs, and they're now looking to ban the cryptocurrency mining, not necessarily blockchain, which is legitimate in China. So can countries such as China support a decentralized platform, like you say, without government control? I'm sorry, the question was, could can decentralized exchanges work in China? Yes. Without government controls. Well, uh, they could work, but the government is quite serious about hurting crypto, and it's kind of a weird... Uh, a dichotomy in China. I was there recently, and the vice chairman of the Central uh, uh, the Communist Party of China uh, introduced me, saying that President Xi says blockchain is one of the two most important technologies for the future of China. Yet they're, I think, mistakenly uh, banning uh, exchanges, and 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 there's even discussion about them banning mining. And it, it's not really necessary to do that because in 20 years we're not going to be using Bitcoin. In China, the Chinese people will use the RMB. Only the RMB will become a crypto currency. It'll, it, it, it will. The central bank of China will turn it into a digital uh, currency. And the real pony here, the real underlying opportunity, is none of this. It's all about the blockchain mm -hmm. technology. Which is what you write about yeah. in your book, Blockchain Revolution, is yeah. about the potential for this. Why isn't it moving? Why don't we see faster pace towards that potential? Because we have yet to yeah. see real blockchain solutions <clears throat> that you can really buy into or touch and feel. Yeah. Well, uh, next week in Toronto, we have this big event. Uh, called Blockchain Revolution Global, where executives, a thousand of them, are coming from countries all around the world. And uh, they will be discussing all kinds of actual implementations of blockchain. This is just not known. And, and it's a myth that this is technology that, that's not scaling and it's not being used for anything important. <laughs> Donald, blockchain, of course, shifts some of the trust from people and institutions to technology. But then you, you get hacked when it comes to Bitcoin exchanges, Bitcoin wallets. So how do you bridge that gap and address the fact that not everything can be solved by technology alone? Well, I think few things can be solved by technology alone. It's humans that solve these problems. You think about Quadriga and the fiasco there. Where right. People lost $250 million. But the problem wasn't the technology. The problem, because blockchains are much harder to hack than the traditional systems that we have today in our banks and governments and other institutions, the problem was bad governance. You had a centralized model where one person had control, and that just doesn't, that, that kind of thing doesn't happen. But if you look more broadly, what's happening in the economy is quite extraordinary. The $50 trillion supply chain industry is moving to blockchain. At this event next week, Richard Smith, who's the CEO of FedEx Logistics, will be discussing how FedEx is going to rebuild its whole logistics business on this technology. And that's one of 15 different industries where really big things are happening. So we have, we're seeing blockchain uh, networks grow where there are kind of a, a group of trusted users. The real, yeah. the real sort of holy grail is the distributed public network. 
network that could be global in nature. So far, it's been dominated by individuals randomly around the world. Yeah. Do, do we need, to kind of to Sherry's point, do we need governments <laughs> to actually be backing that distributed ledger? Or is that antithetical to the whole point of the thing? <laughs> well, there's a role for governments and regulators, uh, especially when it has to do with capital markets. But overall, it's a broader model of governance where companies, individuals, the private sector, uh, governments and others uh, get involved. Yeah. And if you think about uh, just the opportunity here, um, every institution, every part of our economy is being changed. You look at like uh, food safety and the world work that yeah. uh, Walmart is doing. There's all kinds of big, big changes happening in healthcare around blockchain as well. Don Tapscott, great to have you with us. My pleasure.